Hey, welcome back to Mastering EDM with Logic Pro, and this is the 10th video in my series, Introducing Mixing. This is the final video of this particular mini series, and then we're going to go into the next series, which I'm going to be introducing music theory. And But for now, I want to cover uh, a couple other various topics. Um, I titled this section Advanced EQ, but it's more of stylistic EQing and how you can get interesting sounds by using EQ in unconventional methods. So um, the first thing, I'm, I have this bass line here that uh, from my previous project from last week that um, I showed you, uh, I have my bass line going. And um, if you notice right off the bat, it's really heavy. And if I unsolo this, it's really heavy. Typically what you want to do in your track, I'll talk about this later when I get into the, uh, the, uh, Five episodes from now, I'm going to start getting into the series. It's going to be basically covering everything else that I haven't covered. And it's going to talk a lot about music structure and uh, creating synth and stuff like that. But for now, uh, I'm just going to say uh, at the beginning of a track, you don't want it to be the bass line to be heavy right off the bat. Because when you're DJing, it makes things a pain to work with and uh, to bring in without... Um, you know, without conflicting bass lines and sounding like you just got a muddled mess. So uh, I want to make this thinner. This is really thick, heavy bass line. Um, now I could do a couple of things, but what I want to pull up is I want to pull up filters. Um, auto filter is something that I could do to do. So that does something really weird there. And you can see how you could do some interesting stuff with that, but I actually don't want that right now. What I want to do is I want to use the filter bank. Actually, or should I use the track? Eh, use the filter bank, what the heck. Um, and this will really change the sound. And it's kind of like EQing in a weird way. So you get a different sound instead of uh, instead of a an EQ that makes it sounds better. But hopefully I'll be able to thin it out with one of these settings here. There we go, that's what I was looking for. So we have this kind of, it filters around a little bit, so it modulates a little bit, but for now, it's kind of like the stylistic EQ that um, that basically, instead of this really thick, we get, it's still got a lot of punch and a lot of body, but at the same time, it doesn't have a lot of bass anymore, and it still sounds interesting. So I could have this as part of my intro. So what I have is I have that, and then I'd throw in my kick drum, which I honestly don't recall if it's multi-layered. I think it is, it probably is, that's what it's looking like. So I have a multi-layered kick drum here, and what the heck, we'll just bring this in just enough, whatever. Erg, there we go. So we got that going on there and that sounds pretty neat. Now, uh, the other thing is advanced EQ in the sense of taking, um, taking EQ actually let's take out that and do this. So if you notice that doesn't sound mixed well, but at the same time, that could be what you're going for. So you get this really weird sound. So the idea with advanced EQing is you're not focusing on getting it to sound flat or getting it to sound right. You're getting it to sound different. And that's something that's uh, that takes some importance in the EDM scene. There's a lot of EDM music and because it doesn't require a lot of high-end um, equipment to do, uh, it just mostly requires a computer software and a good set of headphones or something like that. Um, there's a lot of tracks out there that sound similar. So um, you, what you want to do is you want to try to get your track to sound funky in some ways or um, or give it a, di a different vibe from other tracks. And you could do that by breaking rules and doing unconventional EQing. That's one of the easiest ones. Unconventional compression is something that's done quite a bit. And uh, it's not as prominent because compression is, is, is like, like I said in my compression video, it's a lot harder to pick out and it's a lot more subtle, though you can make it very obvious. Um, it's more... EQ is typically um, the one that's used to uh, get the weird stylistic sounds. So it completely changes the sound of that track and it could be what you want for the intro. 
Um, so that's that's essentially uh, advanced EQ as I was introducing it. Um, uh, now, well, there's other things you could do with filters. Filters um, you could get, so you get these kind of, it's like um, a filter of your choice, like a low pass, high pass, band pass. And um, you could get it to move based on a variety of things. This one's using envelopes, which I'll talk about later on. I don't believe I've talked about envelopes quite yet. Uh, I might have done that in one of my earlier videos, but I don't think I covered it too well. Um, and then this is LFOs, which I covered in modulation, how it's you got uh, speeds, you got phase, and you've got um, uh, some other settings here that are unique to this. And you have basically how much it affects the uh, the filter here. But I'll, I'll just show you here. Uh, let's do something interesting. Do not beat sync. So technically, it is actually EQ because it's running the same thing that you have in your EQ here. Ooh, that was weird. Um, it's got, it's just got uh, high pass, low pass filters and stuff like that, and it's just moving them around for you. So it's, um, so it's an interesting way to EQ things um, that's unconventional. Like it's not as much EQing because it is kind of more of a modulation thing. But if you are EQing and you get um, and you get uh, you get, you pull it up really high in some spot and cut it really low and you do like these drastic EQs and then you get something really weird. I, I don't even know what this will sound like. So you got like this kind of like it sounds like it's almost going through a telephone or something like that. So um, so that's that's that. It's um, uh, stylistic EQing. It's 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 about keeping your track so it doesn't sound. Um, it doesn't sound like everybody else's track and it, it, it doesn't sound, um, let's see, what's the word? It, it basically, it needs to have some, your track needs to have some form of uniqueness and uh, doing stylistic EQing is one way you could do that. Um, another suggestion is if you get stylus, if you do stylistic EQing and then you throw some form of distortion on top, what that does is it takes the sound that you've changed and changes it even more. So like, say you didn't like the EQ that the stylistic EQ you did, but you throw a distortion on it and it creates something completely different and interesting. That sounds like almost like an entirely different synthesizer or something. That's a very good use for it. And, um, and so, so it's not exactly your, your stylistic EQ is getting the final sound, but it leads up to the final sound. So uh, keep that in mind. Interesting thing to do there. And uh, you might want to try that out with some other effects. Like um, I know you could, uh, the, the, the filter bank is just beautiful if you want to try some funky stuff um, and get some weird sounds that modulate. And so why am I doing this? Filter bank. Thank you. Does some pretty cool stuff there. So uh, try those out and enjoy. Uh, for now, that's it for this video. And the next video I'm going to be covering uh, it should be out Saturday as usual, but I will be talking about music theory. It's going to be really brief. I'm only going to do five episodes on this, but it's going to be enough so that you could actually start keying in notes and you can know what you're doing while you're keying in notes if you don't already. So, um, so uh, the next video, I'm going to actually be talking about notes and scales. And uh, it's not going to be as intense as other music theory things in the sense that I'm going to cover what you need to know, and I'm not going to cover all the actual theory behind it. I'm just going to tell you, um, in generally speaking, what's the standards and um, what you need to know in terms of if you are if you were to actually ever go into learning more about music theory, you'd know the fundamentals. So where if someone was talking about a scale or a major scale, a minor scale, and stuff like that, you would know what they're talking about and what they mean. So uh, I'll get that to you uh, next Saturday. And uh, in the meantime, remember to like my videos, comment, subscribe, and stuff like that. And if you haven't seen any of my other videos, feel free to go back and check them out. Uh, they got some pretty good content. And uh, especially um, in my video for volume, uh, that one hasn't got quite a, quite as many plays as my other ones, but that's because you kind of assume volume is really easy. And it's actually, it's an easy concept, but hard to apply. So I suggest you go look at that one if you haven't. But uh, but otherwise, you know, just check out all, all my videos that interest you or maybe even some that don't because you might be surprised at what you find in those. So until next time, see you and thank you for watching.